Hortonworks and Revolution Analytics have teamed to bring the predictive analytics power of R to Hadoop. Revolution R Enterprise runs natively in Hortonworks, allowing you to easily move your R card analytics to Hadoop without having to learn MapReduce. Hi, I'm Steve Belcher with Revolution Analytics. And for the next few minutes, I will tell you about R and Revolution R Enterprise and two ways that Revolution R Enterprise can work with Hortonworks data platform inside and beside the Hadoop cluster. Then I will demonstrate the use of Revolution R Enterprise beside Hortonworks data platform using the Hortonworks sandbox. R is an open source statistical language that's used by more than 2 million people worldwide. It contains thousands of packages for all kinds of data mining, predictive statistics, and machine learning techniques. As a scripting language, it is open and offers endless possibilities for data analysis and model building. It is, however, memory constrained, and therefore it's rarely used for big data analytics. Revolution R Enterprise extends open source R to be faster, scalable, portable among compute contexts and ready for enterprise deployment. Revolution R Enterprise combines a performance-enhanced commercial version of the R language interpreter with a comprehensive platform for running R and its thousands of packages at scale in distributed systems, plus graphical development tools, data connectivity tools, and deployment tools that integrate R scripts as components of larger business application infrastructures, such as rules engines or business intelligence applications. Remember, R includes thousands of packages that expedite model building. The next two slides provide a list of some of the algorithms in the Revolution R Enterprise Scale R Big Data Big Analytics Ready Library. Scale R algorithms can be used for all kinds of advanced analytics, from data preparation, descriptive statistics, statistics test, sampling, visualization, predictive models, clustering, and classification. Using Scale R means that R programmers don't have to know how to write MapReduce in order to take advantage of the MapReduce compute paradigm. This is very powerful. Revolution R Enterprise capabilities help you extend the power of R throughout the modern data architecture. It is designed to leverage the compute context in which it is running, including Hortonworks data platform, enterprise data warehouses, Linux or Microsoft clusters and servers. It allows R-powered analytics to be embedded into all kinds of analytics applications. As I mentioned earlier, Revolution R Enterprise can run in Hortonworks data platform, which is commonly used for production analytics such as data distillation, model building and re-estimation, or production model scoring. In this case, you are moving the analytics to the data, which allows you to easily use all your data and saves lots of time. Revolution R Enterprise may also be used beside the data store so that some data can be extracted and analyzed outside Hadoop. Some people use this method for ad hoc data distillation, exploratory data analysis, data visualization, or model development. Now I will show you how I can use Revolution R Enterprise with the Hortonworks Sandbox. Since the Sandbox is not a very large production environment, I'm using Revolution R Enterprise beside the Sandbox. In your environment, all you would need to do to run your R scripts inside the Hortonworks Data Platform cluster would be to change the compute context to Hortonworks Data Platform, and the same code you are using to analyze data that has been pulled from Hadoop could be executed in Hadoop. It's that easy. As part of the Hortonworks Sandbox tutorial, I'd like to demonstrate for you now Revolution R Enterprise. We're looking at our application in front of you, and it's broken into multiple parts. In the top left-hand corner, we're looking at the source code where we can write code and execute code and, and review our code. In the upper right-hand corner is the project that I have, and the project can consist of multiple source files that we can keep organized within the project. Below the where the project is, we have the object browser. In the object browser, we can look at packages installed and loaded, as well as any R objects we create as we execute our code. And as we execute our code, we'll get feedback down the console in the lower left-hand corner for any functions or code that we execute. We're going to communicate or connect to Hortonworks Sandbox using an ODBC connection into Hive. I've uploaded a file called Airline into Hortonworks already, and that file is available to you. The first few lines that we're going to execute are listed here 
and I can execute all the code in my script from top to bottom, or I could select an individual line or selection and run it all at once. So I'll go ahead and run this selection right now. Basically, this is just pointing to the data that we're going to analyze. Now this airline data is part of our standard demonstration suite. It's a set of data that represents all airline takeoffs and landings within the United States for about a 20 year period. As part of a larger analysis, we can look at the data and see information about departure delays, arrival delays, etc. We don't have time to do all the analysis, but the bottom line here is that we can do some analysis and we can discover if an airplane takes off late, the pilots actually fly the plane a little bit faster, try to make up for that departure delay and arrive a little bit closer to on time. As part of that, we'll do a subset of the analysis. The first thing we can do, for instance, we can do a standard, let's get some information about this file. So we'll execute this line of code, rxkidinfo, which is part of our scale R big data functionality. And so what I can do is I, I've executed that command. I can see that uh, I've got a certain number of records in the, in the file and columns. For each column, I get some information such as column name, some data elements within the column. For numerics, I get min and max, etc. And I'd also ask for the first three variables, so I can see the first three variables listed here as well. Next, I can do an Rx summary. And for Rx summary, what I can do is I can specify variables that I want to take a look at. And in this case, I want to look at arrival delay, departure delay, and day of week, and just get some information about those variables. So I've got arrival delay and departure delay, both numeric, so I've got some statistics about those variables. And for day of week, that is Monday through Sunday, so I can get the counts for each one of those string or factor variables. Another type of analysis we can do is we can do visual analysis of our data. For instance, we've got an Rx histogram command, what I'll do is I will run the Rx histogram command to see the distribution of the departure delay variable. And so we're going to go through uh, and process the different chunks within the large file that we're analyzing. Now that the histogram command is completed, we can see that there's a large number of occurrences of the departure delay right around zero, which makes sense. Uh, and that's a good thing uh, that most of the departures delayed are uh, very small. It makes sense. That means that most of the planes have taken off on time or close to on time, but there are some planes that are delayed as much as looks like two to 300 minutes, uh, so a few hour delay. So that's not a good thing. Another uh, command that we can run is correlation. So if we want to see uh, if variables are correlated, we can run the correlation command. And in this case, we're looking to see if there's a correlation between departure delay and arrival delay. And in fact, there is a uh, correlation is 0.87. So it's very highly correlated, which makes sense. Uh, if a plane takes off late, it's probably going to arrive late. The key being here is how late in comparison to how late the departure was. And finally, one of the things we might want to do is to build a model to try to better understand these delays. And what we can do is we can run a linear regression using RxLinMod and try to predict arrival delay based upon departure delay. So I'll go ahead and execute that command. With the regression completed, we can see that as we look at the console window, that the regression is run. We can see the formula. We can see some information about number of valid observations and missing observations. And finally, we can see the regression equation itself, including the intercept term and the coefficient for the departure delay variable, as well as some other statistical information about the model. Thank you very much for your time today. As we have reviewed how to use Revolution R Enterprise with the Hortonworks Sandbox. If you have any follow-up questions, please contact us at revolutionanalytics.com. Thank you.